Hi everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. So today, oh boy, I left the thing open. Hold on one sec. Today I am bringing to you a decently enough requested video. I don't know that I would say this is like super highly requested, but it is something that has been requested enough on my channel and it is something that I did want to share with y'all and that is a flip through and a setup video of my reading journal. So the reading journal that I do use is made by Archer and Olive. This is one of their 8x8 eight eight notebooks and it's a bullet journal style notebook. These are very, very popular bullet journals for a reason. Um, I think I point this out later on, but if you knew me at all, you could see this is totally on brand for me. I have a little bit of Starbucks dribble on my cover. <laughs> but this is um, one of their fall releases that they had this year, and I, I immediately snatched up the cover as soon as I possibly could. Um, I went with the 8x8 size because I just love the room, I love the flexibility, I love the quality of Archer and Olive notebooks. I don't personally have a discount code for Archer and Olive, but there are so many discount codes out there, and that is literally how I've purchased every single thing that I've gotten from Archer and Olive. I just look up discount codes, and um, then I go ahead and purchase it that way. I don't ever pay full price for the Archer and Olive, even though I would, but there are enough discount codes out there that if that's an if that's like a bullet journal or a reading journal that you want to invest in, they are a little bit more on the pricey side. So go ahead and find yourself a discount code. That's definitely what I did. They also have sales frequently enough. Um, and I have since like stocked up on eight by eight size notebooks. So I've got like um, in the background, I think you can kind of see it that like aqua cart back there. That's my planner cart. And the second shelf on that planner cart is all backups of my 8x8 Archer and Olive notebooks and I really am only using them for the reading journal so I don't know why I have so many. Um, yeah I am going to switch to the top-down filming um, for the bulk of this video. I finally got top-down filming kind of figured out with my new setup and with my new microphone. But I really hope you enjoy this setup video and this flip through and um, links and information for inspiration because I heavily borrowed a lot of inspiration from an Instagram account down here. So I'm gonna put all of that in the info box below so that way you can check out some inspo for yourselves. All right. Now that we've got the overhead view, um, this is the introductory page that I decided to do. I actually didn't color anything on the title page. I just never end up filling those out. Um, but for the most part, what you're going to see inside this journal is going to be Paper Minty Studios. That's like all the stickers here. And even this, um, this is actually like a post-it note that she has in this gingham pattern. And this is Lauren Phelps Designs. I also use these stamps quite frequently, quite heavily throughout the journal. Um, that's just a set that I picked up from Amazon and I can link that below. But this is basically what I do. I'm not very great at drawing. I do draw some in this, um, in this whole journal, but it's like a very minimal drawing. The rest, I really do rely heavily on stickers and everything for my decorations. So this is the title page. And then if we flip it open, we have my index page. So on the side, I pulled out some of my more frequently used colors. This green is actually the mild liner, that's upside down. The mild liner. Um, this was one of the newer mild liners that they have. This is an olive. Another primary color that I use all the time. This is Tombow color 992. I use this in like my everyday planning. This color I pretty much just use to color in all the stars <laughs> for my star ratings. So this is 993. And then I use this color pretty frequently as well. This is 977. So you'll see how I end up using the, uh, these colors primarily. But I wanted that green to be my main accent color. So I ended up doing a full index spread on two pages. I don't actually need this much space for an index. So right here are all of like my main spreads. And then right here, I started listing five-star books because I realized I didn't have that many spreads to begin with. Um, and we'll see how it goes from here. I'm already, 
I'll, I'll flip to the next page so that way you can see. I'm already past my first initial goal. So my first initial reading goal this year was 50 books and I have just reached past that point. Um, so now there's going to be some spreads in the back. And as I'm like figuring out my reading journal style in the back, I have more spreads. So once I finish like all my five stars that I want to index in here, I might have to go back like on this column or something and add those extra spreads that I didn't get a chance to mention. But anyways, this is my 2023 reading tracker. Again, um, we have Washi that um, gingham pattern that's from paper minty studios the stickers are paper minty studios and then this one particular washi with those words are lauren phelps designs she doesn't make that one anymore i should say paper minty studios only does um she does like monthly collections now so you have to like sign up for the monthly collection when she releases it it's not a subscription or anything um but i've gone through many phases and many years of ordering stickers from her so i have a lot of like leftovers um because I just love her artwork so much so this particular pattern was like a museum pattern that she had and this was like a keys pattern that she had but she doesn't have those anymore um again these are also paper minty studio so if you like her artwork when I'm flipping through then follow her on Instagram like that's the best way to figure out when she's going to release her new monthly collection and basically you just buy the box of like either the full spread with um stickers and washi and vellum or you can just get like a sticker monthly box so follow her on Instagram I'll put her info below because I just love her artwork um once again using that olive mild liner um as my accent color here as well Oh, you'll also see that I started numbering my pages once I got past the index. Okay, this spread is something that I've loved doing for years and years and years. So this is like my bookshelf. When I finish a book, then I put it on the bookshelf. Um, right there, I kind of like made it look like, you know, it was like a poster. So that's my 50 books of the year that I would like to read. And then when I finish it, I just kind of draw a new book and see how the bookshelf turns out. But this is where a lot of those colors are coming in now. So I wanted to put a key on here um, to put some more color into this page, but also so then I can see like how many physical books am I reading? How many audiobooks am I reading? And how many ebooks am I reading? So this key kind of follows throughout the whole journal um, in some of the different spreads that I have so I can see what they look like. At quick glance this spread my books read um, this was I didn't know if I wanted to do this one and I'm actually kind of glad with how this ended up turning out but you can see this is where I put all of the book covers that I um, of the books that I finished all in a row so I have them all numbered and I have their star rating below them so I ended up doing three no how many pages one two three four and then I do have a fifth page so that way I could get to book number 50 and that's where, where I stopped so then you know I basically like reconfigured these boxes these boxes I pretty much measure for um an inch by an inch and a half and I started off in if you saw this in person, you could tell they're a little bit different. Um, and then as I started reading more books um, and I started reading them a lot faster than I had anticipated, then I switched the method of how I was printing these off. So originally I was just going on to Goodreads and creating a Word document and then like printing off a page, cutting them and then gluing them into the spread. Well, it, I just couldn't keep up with that. And I ended up now using my Canon Ivy printer and you can create a grid of four in their app and so then I just load four um, then I just load four book covers into one two by three photo and so one of those Canon Ivy sheets will you can print off 
four book covers on there. So then I cut them up and then it's sticker paper and I don't have to glue them. So that ended up being a lot easier. And so all of these covers are from my Canon Ivy, which is why you can see a little bit of a glare. And then same thing here. This spread, I'm gonna have to make another one. <laughs> this is my series tracker. So I, by starting all these romance series, like I filled up this sheet pretty quickly. I was really hoping not to do that because I was trying to finish series. But it is really nice to like keep track of a, a quick glance how many I'm currently reading right now. So it's pretty straightforward. I have the name of the series written down here. This is on this side how many books there are in the series and then I just color in once I've finished a book. If I've DNF'd the series then I just color in gray for the rest of the boxes or if I already started the series last year and I didn't read them this year then I put a gray um, as like books one and two for instance for the Victorian Rebels or the Red Rising Saga. I read the whole trilogy before this year so I colored one two three before that. Um, so that's how I've colored those in. Um, this washi is also... That washi is Lauren Phelps Designs, this one with the leaves. This is a really interesting spread that I did. This is my book idea spread. This is by no means a TBR spread. <laughs> um, I'm experimenting this year not doing a TBR at all. And this particular page is really just a list of books that I have on my shelf, like physical versions of the book that I have on my shelf. And it's just an idea list. So if I ever find myself like, oh, what should I read next? I don't really know. Um, then I can check this page to see if there's anything on here that's like, it's been sitting on your shelf for a long time. Why don't you, you know, take a stab at it? And then I cross them off if I get to it. So that's how I was able to tackle some of my long-term TBR veterans, like The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal, um, The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden, The Running Man by Stephen King. And then I did put some of like the newer, fant or not newer fantasy books. It's all, <laughs> There's a lot of fantasy on here. I put some of the newer romance books on here because I just didn't know how many romance books that I would be reading. So that's where I put The Making of a Highlander, Dreaming of You by Lisa Kleypas, etc. I did end up making an anticipated releases page, but to be honest, after I filled it out, um, I haven't looked at it since. <laughs> and I have read... You know, I've got Trust of the Emerald Sea. So, like, I put the the Brandon Sanderson Secret Project books on here. But then I bought Spare. I bought The Stolen Air. Um, I'm really excited for In the Lives of Puppets by T.J. Klune. What else? I'm really, I really do hope that um, the fourth Morgan Crow book comes out. I'm very, very excited. And then here, once again, since I'm not doing any TBRs, I wanted to figure out, like, how can I tackle some reading goals and so I typically make a book bingo of just some different um some different options for myself so there's a couple that I'm still trying to fill out I used I wouldn't recommend this um I used the Stedler Triplus Triplus Stedler Triplus Fine Liner so I used that for a lot of the line work but when you go over it with a Tombow marker, like I do here, I don't know if you can totally tell, but it's really warped the color because it's not, um, I don't know, it, it doesn't do well when you color over it, not even after leaving it to dry for a long time. Um, that's what prompted me to finally just like bite the bullet and just go ahead and buy some Pigma Micron fine liners. I only have three at the moment. This is a one zero but I have some point threes as well some zero threes this pigma micron um zero three is working out really well for me and then I do have one dedicated spread for the first law along 
We have already read the blade itself. That live show is done and dusted, and you can take a look at it on Becca and the Books channel. I am actually, as I am filming this video, I am currently in the middle of Before They Are Hanged, which is book number two. Very, very exciting book. I've been really, really having a good time with it. So this spread is a fun one because I didn't know at quick glance, like, which read-alongs I would be participating in in this year. And so far, I've really only done a couple. But I, I knew I wanted to make some type of read-along spreads, and I just didn't know when I would do that. But I knew I could put the first law along on here right away. So I have all six books that we're going to be reading this year. And then I've got, you know, stars ready to go. So once I've finished them, then I can go ahead and continuously fill out this page. This page is my 2023 overview. And I created this layout just as a way for me to keep tabs on how my reading is going. So at the top, I'm going to be putting the total number of books that I read. These three are the format. So physical, ebook, audiobook. This is going to be my own TBR. Is it, uh, you know, a book that I already own on my TBR? And is this not a book? <laughs> so all of those Kindle Unlimited books are going right here, basically. My star rating here, special goals, you know, keeping track of my Stephen King and my romance. Once again, I did not think I was going to be reading as many romances as I have been. And then I have how many books I've DNF'd in total. The new, used, and borrowed books. So that's a fun one. And once again, the two main colors are Tombow 992 and the Olive Mildliner. All right, then we get into my monthly spreads. And these ones, I wish I had taken a little bit more time to play with the design, but this basically was such a last minute idea of mine that I wanted to get these on the page. So that's why it doesn't carry the same design theme that I've been using for a majority of my spreads, but I would still consider these monthly spreads a part of like my main setup. But anyways, um, let's see this sticker. These are from Virgo and paper. That's where they're from. This is just some black and white grid washi from Amazon. This is some Pion PET tape that I got off of Etsy. I really love the Pion artwork. This is the She um, collection. And then these stickers, I can't hand letter for anything. Um, these are actually from Mandy Lynn Plans, like the clear mat, um, because I use her stickers all the time in my planners. So those are where those are from. And then basically I just chose a color per month stuck a girl on there and then I have the same key that I was using in the front of the book with my bookshelf and it's pretty straightforward. I can see, you know, I've been putting down what days I finished the book, the rating, and then I'll put down a dot next to it so I can see if it was physical audio or ebook. So the ones that I'm working on are right here or well, obviously April. And then these ones are the blank ones, but this is what they ended up looking like. So I wished that I had taken a little bit more time, chose, you know, these two pages turned out way too harsh, but once I had like put them down on the paper, there was no turning back. So <laughs> that's why I have that one. This same thing with this color, it wasn't something I was happy with. So I wish I had been like a little bit more, I don't know if, I wish I had thought about the color schemes a little bit better, but what can you do? It's fine. All right, now here we are in the like meat and potatoes of my reading journal. And this whole setup is a complete inspiration slash I stole it with permission from Books Ergo Sum on Instagram. I will put her Instagram down below. I mean, her reading journal spreads are just goals. They're so gorgeous. But she's the one who really showcased this kind of layout. And this is the only reason why I've been able to keep on top of a reading journal this year. So how she does it and how I have set up my whole journal 
basically because it's worked so well is obviously you can see the table of contents. So I've got books one through 10 here and then just a little splash page. And so for 10 books, I will carry the same theme. This was my first chance taking a stab at it. Please don't judge the artwork because <laughs> now we're getting into me drawing and you can see why I use stickers because me drawing is not as clean. But anyways, um, this was my first stab at doing lilacs. So here's what a reading journal spread looks like. So at the top, I put the book number. Sorry about the glare. I won't push down so hard. At the top, I put the book number and then I have a little section at the top where I put the title, the author, genre. I put the mood of the book, the dates that I read it, and then how many pages. So that's what um, I have at the top of each page. And then I put in a space for the book cover. Um, I have page number down here. I have the theme artwork in the middle. And then I also put the star rating down at the bottom. So this whole layout completely inspired Stolen with Permission from Books Ergo Sum on Instagram. And she is so much better at this than I am with her creativity and her drawing. And um, I think she's doing like one of those A it, no, not an A5, an A4 size Archer and Olive. Maybe not an Archer and Olive. I don't know. She's doing a bigger one. She's been painting this year. It, it looks so good. <laughs> Her artwork is great. Um, but so that theme will carry for three whole pages. Or not three whole pages. For that theme, that theme then will carry for 10 whole books. And what I will do, and this is a tip from her as well, because I messaged her on Instagram. And um, she said that she sets up the decoration ahead of time so that when she finishes a book, all she has to do is put the book information in and then write down her thoughts. They're like not anything um, that, it's, it's really just like my feelings about the book. They're not reviews or anything. These are just like, how I felt about the book once I finished it. So books three and four, five and six, seven and eight, sorry, there's the artwork, nine and 10. And then once I've gotten to the 10th book of the theme, then I do my stats breakdown. Um, so then I break down books one through 10 again, my top reads. So I pick out the top three from these 10 books, you know, what I rated them. And then I do some stats on this side. So what I've been doing is, okay, there's a lot happening here. But basically the genre, and I get better at this page as I've gone along too. Like this was my first stab at it and it, it looks okay, but I do get better at it. So anyways, um, these are the genres. And then this stands for, I read two dark romance, two science fiction, two YA fantasy. So then I can see how many per genre that I'm reading. This one I listed my DNF. And then I will then go down and translate that into the star rating. So I can see that of my dark romance, one was a two star and one was a three star based on the color. And that's just how I have been keeping track of star ratings and genres and how many genres at really quick glance. I put my average rating here for these 10 books. This graph represents authors I've read before and new to me authors. And then this is where I've been putting the mood of the different books. So this has been fun to fill out at the end of everything. Once again, just don't pay too closely attention. <laughs> This theme, I did a daisies theme for books 11 through 20. This one I actually am proud of. So this books 11 through 20 in my daisies theme. I just love how the Elsie Silver colors have on their covers have been like pairing with the daisies. So like that flawless page, 
that's just like a snapshot worthy for sure. Um, and I love Heartless in particular I th because of the warmth of this color matched this really well. So that's like the risk you take if you pre-decorate your spreads is like this doesn't match the theme, but whatever. Totally fine. Again, another Elsie Silver color cover Ugh, to go along with this theme. And then here are my stats. Books 21 through 30, I decided to go a little crazy and do a little strawberries theme. I really like how this ended up turning out where I was kind of putting those behind the letters. And sometimes I journal like immediately after I finish a book. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll just like print off the cover photo. I do the cover photos in um, my Canon Ivy printer. And sometimes I'll just kind of like save its spot. And then when I have time, I'll come back and, and fill it out. This, I think I was finally getting the groove. This one looks cleaner than the other two. Books 31 through 40, I did a uh, Bluebells theme. Don't pay too much attention to my Bluebell drawings. They're not super great. I was like using some reference photos and just trying my best. But I do think the colors worked out really well. That's for sure. And this is actually like a, a mild liner. This, this cover goes really well with this theme. Ooh, this one does too. This is a good two page spread actually. This also goes with the theme, just color wise. So it's a happy, happy coincidence when that happens. This one is the best stats page that I've done so far because since I did the blue in mild liner colors, I just ended up picking all mild liner colors for the colors on the, on the page and it turned out really great because then they kind of all match. And finally, we have books 41 through 50. This was a, a difficult color scheme for me. I just wanted to try something that wasn't flowers because you can see where my drawing skills. <laughs> I have my limits, so <laughs> I was trying something that was not flowers and this is what I came up with. It was an interesting color scheme for sure. And so these are some of the books that I've recently finished. Now you're getting kind of a sneak peek. This stats page turned out really great. So yeah, these were, I basically am now just repeating the process. Now that I have finished books one through 50, I'm just gonna try and see if I can hit 100 now because now I've got all the spreads from the beginning and I've basically copied them for the second half. So this is what it looks like when I don't have any books in there. Once again, I'm doing these um, boxes as an inch by an inch and a half and the books are just one sheet of Canon Ivy printer paper and that's um, two by three. So if I was ha if I had like an A5 journal I would definitely scale this down um, but that's that's why I got the eight by eight journal so I didn't have to and I don't find that um, it's hard. I don't think it's hard for me to fill these pages. Sometimes they, I don't have a lot to say about a book, which is totally fine because that's just the reality of it. Um, and sometimes I have like so much to say. Indigo was such a life changing book. So I again used Paper Minty Studios, just basically copied that same design and wanted to carry it through for the second half of the book. Um, so this is what it looks like when it's all blank. And this is a spread that I had to add later because I was like, I should really keep track of which books I'm DNFing. So I add, added just a simple list. And then I've already marked out 
my next several themes. So these ones I haven't filled out as intensely because you can see I'm working my way through this table of contents. But books 51 through 60, I think that's an anemone. I really hope I said that right. <laughs> And then this is what it looks like when I have nothing on the page. Because I'll like make sure that I put the boundaries for the photo on there. So when I'm journaling, if I haven't already printed off the picture, I don't accidentally journal in the parts where I'm going to cover it with a book cover. And then this is what I do when I just have like a blank stats sheet. I just wait to fill that whole thing out. I don't even lay out the graphs yet until I know how many books are going to be following the categories. And then I just mark out where my top three are going to go. And I'm glad that I do it that way, because if I go back to this stats page, like look at my ratings right here. I read seven of those books were four star reads. And if I had previously like stopped it at what I thought it would be, and pre-filled this whole page out, I would not have had enough room to go up to seven books for that. So I just leave it blank and just wait until I finish that next set of 10 books before I, before I begin filling this out. All right, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that flip through. Um, I should have said this in the introductory part of the video and I totally forgot, but you probably could hear in the audio that there was some thunder outside, there was a crying kid at some points, and it wasn't super loud and it wasn't super often, but I did film that portion of the video last night. And yeah, a storm rolled in and it was bedtime, so I was hoping that you wouldn't be able to pick up on it. I was hoping you wouldn't pick up on it on the microphone, but you did. So <laughs> I hope you were able to just kind of like skip over that and that you enjoyed the rest of the flip. Um, but let me know what you think about that um, flip through in the comment section below. I have really, really, really enjoyed that whole system of just pre-decorating so that way when I'm done with the book, I can just go ahead and write my thoughts. And it has worked out really well because you can see how much I've been able to fill in in my in my journal. I have tried various methods of reading journals before, and this is the only one that's kept me consistent. I've definitely started reading journals in the past and then like abandoned them not even halfway through the year. So yeah, as soon as I'm done with, I'm, I'm gonna have to like bust out my backup stash once I get past the ability to do any more updates in this journal because there's there's very few pages left in this one so I'm pretty excited um, to be able to update that throughout the year. If you would like another flip through, if you would like, you know, when I hopefully maybe hit 100 books, I don't know, we'll see when the next flip through is, please let me know in the comment section below. I can also throw in my planner videos again. I was thinking about doing a Q1 planner wrap up. I haven't done a planner video in a very long time, but that is still something I'm like super into as you can see by my planner cart. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section below. If you made it this far, go ahead and put like a leaf branch for Archer and Olive. And thank you so much for tuning in. Follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter and Instagram. It's at what cast spread the same as this channel. So it should be super easy for you to find. And of course, you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.